Hola, buenos días. Bienvenidos al programa de seminarios virtuales de la OSEX de Londres, cómo hacer negocios en el Reino Unido. En esta oportunidad hablaremos de cómo establecer una empresa en el Reino Unido para vender por Amazon. Y a continuación, cedo la palabra al director de la Oficina Comercial de Londres, el señor Ricardo Romero, con quien nos va a explicar más del programa. Buenas tardes. Eh, quisiera agradecer a todos por estar, por participar en estos eventos que venimos organizando ya desde el año pasado. Una serie de webinars dirigidos a generar eh, capacidades para hacer negocios en el Reino Unido. Eh, hace, me parece que en el mes de febrero hicimos un webinar de cómo hacer negocios en plataformas electrónicas y debido a la respuesta que tuvimos en ese momento, consideramos importante hacer un nuevo eh, seminario de cómo establecer una empresa en el Reino Unido para poder vender en Amazon UK. Y eso es lo que nos lleva a esta, esta mañana, en el caso de Lima y esta tarde para nosotros aquí en Londres, a presentar a un grupo de expertos eh, que cada uno tendrá un tiempo específico para definir y que hemos invitado para que nos eh, compartan con nosotros sus experiencias y trabajo vinculado a este ejercicio de cómo establecer una empresa uh, para vender en Amazon. En primer lugar tenemos al señor Richard Muñoz, que es director de servicios para negocios de Mary Harcourt. Ellos ven temas de contabilidad, es un accounting firm, y él va a hablar específicamente de cómo estableció una empresa en el Reino Unido. En segundo lugar, tendremos a Adelaide Carlton. Es cómo abrir una, una cuenta en un banco, una cuenta corporativa. Eh, ella es jefe de alianzas en Thai Partners. Luego tenemos eh, al señor Matthew Aiken, jefe de contenidos de Companies Made Simple. Es un sistema online para establecer empresas. Él nos va a explicar cómo esa plataforma funciona. Y en último lugar tenemos al señor Kevin Dixie, que es fundador de Fuel My Website. Ya lo hemos tenido en una presentación anterior. Y él específicamente nos va a explicar cómo crear una empresa para poder venderle a Amazon. Y sin mayor introducción, lo dejo al señor Richard Muñoz. Thank you, Richard. Muchas Welcome, gracias. Everyone. Um, I made a little uh, introduction. Mm -hmm. um, I explained exactly what is that we're doing. Um, and we're very happy that you all of you are here with us this afternoon. And without uh, further ado, I want to give the floor so you can give us some highlights of how to create a company in the United Kingdom. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I'll just uh, share my screen. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. Gracias a Dios. <laughs> right, okay. I'll start again. Right. Okay, so the steps to setting up a business in the UK. First, uh, particularly when you want to you know, kind of uh, trade through Amazon, it will be necessary to form a company. Um, now, um, the the dynamics of uh, of that will be covered later in the uh, presentation uh, once your company is open you need to open a bank account it's a necessary uh, you know a, a requirement obviously to you know collect the money and so forth you must register the company with hmrc this is the tax collecting uh, um, side of um, the obligations that you have to do when you're inside the uk once everything's registered uh, with the above, you would register with Amazon UK, uh, and then as a seller, you should be able to begin trade. So it's envisaged, uh, the scenario would be that you would have your business in Peru, which owns and controls the UK company. Peru will supply the goods to the UK business, and then the UK business will make the sales. Then any profits in the UK will be subject to UK tax, but Uh, the profits remaining after that, you should be able to withdraw from the company and, uh, you know, kind of uh, use it as uh, your bonus and remuneration. How do you form a UK company? 
So you can go to a formation agency, they can form a company for you for a fee. And later in the presentation, you're gonna be hearing from companies made simple uh, and they can kind of uh, take you step by step on how to go through the uh, requirements to set one up. Alternatively, you can also use accountants and solicitors. Uh, solicitors may be quite pricey and similarly with accountants. <laughs> or you could form it yourself from going to company's house. But because of the fact that you're going to be doing international trade, I would strongly recommend that you'd use somebody like Companies Made Simple, who would be able to just uh, tailor, tailor it all for you and set it up with, with ease. What do companies require when they're set up? You need an address, which is going to be the registered office. This must be a UK address. But again, there's ways of uh, setting up a PO box or some sort of office that will represent the company in the UK. You need a company director, it's requirement. You only need one director under UK law, but sometimes uh, one or two might be good. You could also have a company secretary, but this is optional. In the old days, it was a, requ a requisite to have this, but um, nowadays it's, um, you know, it's pretty much uh, an optional uh, side. You have to also consider who the shareholders will be, the owners of the company. So shareholders, um, as the title suggests in a limited company, the company is limited by the investment that you're going to put in the company in the form of shares. The shares carry votes, so that is control of the company. You can invest as little as one pence in your company for your initial shareholding, but normally it's a pound or a hundred pounds for a small company formation. Again, have a chat with companies made simple and they can tell you the best way forward for your initial shareholding. Shareholders can be people or other limited companies as well. So if you have a limited company in Peru, it's possible that it can own the UK company or you as individual business people could own the UK company direct. Companies have uh, various, um, you know, kind of rights and obligations, but also various freedoms. So companies can borrow money from directors or other companies. Um, you can also borrow from a company if needs be. Um, if you establish business uh, premises in the UK, uh, you will need to uh, register for a payroll to be able to pay, you know, any staff that you, you do have in the UK. Again, it will depend on how you want to set up and, and trade because it can be quite small or quite large and quite serious. It just depends on how you want to approach. As I said before, a bank account will be required for your company. The bank account belongs in law to the company. So the bank account will belong to the company, but you will control the company. Directors such as yourselves will be the signatories of the bank account. And any cash that the company makes uh, on, on the outset will belong to the company, but you will be able to withdraw money after profits so long as uh, th there are you know, reserves available for that. Reporting requirements in the UK. So companies are legally required to file annual results with Companies House, but don't worry, it's a scaled down version of the accounts and you have to um, kind of um, show them up and register them with Companies House. You similarly have to submit full set of accounts to HMRC so they can see all of your trading results. If your company has a year end of March 2021, you must file with Companies House by December, you must pay any tax by the January and file the corporation tax return by March. So these are the deadlines that would be required from a UK company set up. Company will be pretty much like you would expect in a Peruvian company, you will have a profit and loss account, which will show your income, expenditure and profit. You will have balance sheet, which will show your assets and liabilities. A quick example of how it looks in a UK sort of format. So you've got your sales up here, working all the way down to your earnings at the bottom and any taxes. Similarly, you can see in the balance sheet, the main taxes that you need to be aware is corporation tax, VAT. Corporation tax is 19% of profits from the company's trade. You must pay that nine months and one day after your year end. This is assessed on the CT600 tax return, which is filed at HMRC. Other issues, Residency, you'll have to check how your company is controlled because it's possible that maybe the Peruvian tax authorities may uh, also want to collect some tax. You'll have to check that with your based uh, accountants in Peru to see how you can, um, you know, kind of uh, mitigate this. But generally, it's down to control and uh, decision making. 
VAT is the other tax which you need to be aware. There's a main rate of 20%, also five and 0% rates. You have to complete the return every three months and it's filed through software under this system called Making Tax Digital. Another thing to bear in mind is uh, importation taxes. This depends how you'll be selling to your customers. If the product is sent to Peru, then uh, to the customer, under an example called drop shipping, which I'll show in a second, uh, you would have to charge VAT. So an example of drop shipping, there's your Peruvian company. Customer in the UK will order to the UK company. The sales will come from the UK to the customer. Peru then could send by ship the goods direct to the customer and then invoice the UK company. If the product sent from Peru to premises or storage in the UK, then it's a slightly different regime. I would recommend strongly that if you're interested in the importation to have a one-to-one -one consultation with ourselves because we'll be able to at least apply to yourselves how the taxes work and also how um, the circumstances change because if you import or you drop ship, it's slightly different with uh, how you deal with a VAT. Amazon's an online marketplace and under the central seller central approach, um, potentially Amazon may take care of the VAT for you, but again, it does depend on how you trade. If you have goods in the UK and you sell them, then you'll be charging VAT as normal. But if you're importing the goods, it's possible that it will just go through Amazon and Amazon will take care of the VAT for you. In any case, if you're moving goods, it's good to have uh, registration for VAT uh, because that helps with any imports and similarly when you want to expand in the future. So I appreciate I've only got a short amount of time left, uh, but um, that's basically a whistle stop tour of how we um, uh, set up a, a business in the UK. Uh, the other speakers will be able to tell you about the constituent components, uh, such as a bank account and so forth. And uh, if you have any questions later, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for the presentation. Um, definitely some very key points there. And uh, hopefully some of, our, of the audience will be reaching out uh, after this as well. They can always contact them. Uh, their contact is, is there, of course. And so now we're going to go into the second part of, the, of this webinar. And we're going to go into more detail on how to um, actually open a bank account with a, with a special bank here Then we have a representative um, tied. So Adelaide. Hello. We'll, we'll follow you. Thank hey. you. Hi. Thank you for coming. No problem at all. I will just get the presentation ready. One second. How does that look? Yes, yeah, good. Thank you. Oh, cool. brilliant. Um, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you so much to Andreas and, and the team for inviting Tide along uh, to the seminar today. So Tide, I'll tell you a little bit about the company. Um, we are a platform that offers business bank accounts as one of our main product features. We are a UK company founded here in London about five years ago. And we're currently the leading challenger bank uh, or banking platform, sorry, in the UK. Um, with over 300,000 businesses with us uh, to date. Tide, the entire goal um, of the company is to essentially save businesses time and money. So that's, that's what we're here to do. And we do that through an easy onboarding process and also a pricing structure attached to the account that I'll go through in just a second. So moving on to the next slide. Um, as I mentioned, Tide's here to help members save time and money by building the leading business financial platform. So how the platform works is we offer business bank accounts and they are provided through our partner, ClearBank. They're a clearing bank here in the UK. They provide uh, the protection, full protection up to the 85,000 pound mark uh, for our bank accounts. And then we also offer a whole bunch of other features that can help you do your business admin alongside things like accounting and uh, expenses 
the general things that will help your, make your accountant's life a lot easier that we'll go through on the next slide. Um, there are no monthly or annual fees attached to a tight account, and that is in line with our mission to save time and money. And the onboarding process takes about five or 10 minutes to complete. It's all very straightforward um, and can be done on the web or on your mobile device. There are a few things that you just need to make sure that you have sorted before you complete your sign up, which again, we'll go through in a few minutes. Um, but it's all very, very straightforward and we're here to help with that process. Some of the features of the platform, uh, of course, we have the business bank account, the main feature there. Alongside that, we also have the ability to go through auto categorization, where as your expenses and uh, your spending comes in, you're able to set categories attached to that. That makes uh, accounting and tracking of your expenses very easy. There's also a free invoicing feature available for all TIDE members. So you can actually issue invoices within your TIDE app, send them to your clients or your customers and have them pay you through that whole process or within the app. There's insurance that you can uh, opt to, to, uh, to take out on each invoice to protect you from non-payment. There's also a really handy feature where you can upload receipts against particular transactions in your app and you can store multiple of them there. And what that does is allows you to download them or share, share them with your accountant at any point and makes expense management extremely easy and tax time a whole lot easier as well. Alongside that, we have integrations set up with some of the main accounting uh, software available around the world, um, like Xero, Sage, uh, QuickBooks. So if you use any of that, or if your accountant uses any of that software, you are able to set up a direct link between your tight account and your accountant, or between your tight account and that accounting software and make life even easier. Additionally, if you are setting up a company that you work with other people, on and they need to be able to spend money uh, through your Tide account, you can issue expense cards and those can be managed within the app or on the web. And those can be, you can issue up to 35 for each account uh, and set your own kind of spend limits and things like that on those expense cards. So just to make life easier for you as well. There's different levels of membership plans available with Tide. The base account is completely free to use, as I mentioned. So there's no monthly or annual fees attached to that. Uh, you get a MasterCard issued as part of the account that is free to spend on uh, overseas and in the UK. So any foreign transactions are just charged at the MasterCard currency rate with no further charge added. Um, it might all sound a little bit too good to be true. <laughs> so far, I haven't mentioned anything about costs. So there are uh, very few costs attached to the account. Um, one is that if you are doing any bank transfers between Tide and another account, uh, there is a 20p fee uh, each time. However, you can benefit from one year of free transfers by being part of the seminar. Um, also, additionally, if you were to use your Tide card at any ATM around the world, there is a one pound fee attached to that. And the final fee is simply for any cash deposits, which really would only apply if you were inside the UK. So if you are in the UK and you do try to deposit cash into your account, you can do that via a post office. Um, and that's a one pound fee as well. There's also membership plans available with the product. Um, and those really help you if you are finding that you've got requirements for maybe a law helpline um, or that you're doing a lot of transfers per month or you need some more expense cards, you can opt to just upgrade and pay a monthly fee to access more of the free product features that are already available to you. So hopefully that all makes sense. In terms of sign up and onboarding, um, as I mentioned, it is free. It's very quick and easy. Um, there are a few things that you need to make sure that you have before sign up. And that is that your company must be registered with UK's com UK Companies House. So that's the first step. Um, you have to be a director of the company in order to complete sign up. And you need to have a valid UK mobile phone number. You don't have to be in the UK. You don't have to live in the UK in order to sign up, um, but your company will need to be registered with Companies House. And it's very likely that you'll need a, an, an office address in the UK for that as well. Um, a form of identification is also needed that needs to be in your hand. So that could be your passport, a driver's license or a national ID card and your app store or your Google Play store on the device that you choose to open an account on just needs to be set to the UK. Uh, region in order to download the Tide app. Our sign up process can be done on a computer uh, at first, but by the time you get to the point where you need to verify your ID, 
that does need to be done on a mobile device. So you can get about two thirds of the way. Um, we'll pass this on at the end of the seminar, but there is a, the ability for you to gain one year free transfers from being part of this seminar. And there's a really small summary there of the sign-up process in general. Because you are likely to be residing overseas, um, what will happen is as you go through the sign up, it does take about five or 10 minutes to do. It's very, very quick. Um, and then you'll very likely fall into a process called manual onboarding. And that is because you're, we need to just uh, grab a secondary form of ID um, for overseas residents, very standard stuff. So what will happen is one of our analysts will reach out and ask for some more information. And all you need to do is reply back within the app or via the email um, that's sent to you, and you can complete your sign up process from there. In terms of questions, we have a business development and member support team who are available for any questions that you might have about onboarding or about the Tide product uh, or anything else you might think of. So the business development team, uh, their phone number is just here and they're available UK time, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. And our member support team is available at hello.tide.co and they are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and they can, if you mention that you've been at this seminar, they'll refer anything through to us at partnerships as well that we can help with. And again, we'll make sure these details are available to you after this seminar. And that is a very quick wrap up of Tide. New platform can help us ease this and be careful. And on that, I'll just give to Matthew Ackham challenges to welcome him. Hi, Matthew, you're, you're, you're mute. Sorry about that. Hi there, I hope you're all well. Um, I'm going to look at how to go about registering a UK limited company. Um, so yeah, I'll just share my screen. So this is the UK company formation process by Companies Made Simple. Okay, first off, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about Companies Made Simple. So we've been forming UK companies since 2002. Um, and along with Companies House, we've very much pioneered the online company formation process. And we've now formed over 1 million companies for people living in the UK and people living outside of the UK. Now, as Richard touched on, to form a limited company so this is a limited company by shares which is the most popular company structure in the uk you need a director that's the person who runs the company you need a shareholder this is the person who actually owns the company and you need a person with significant control now this is the person who ultimately controls the company and in the majority of the cases this will be the director and shareholder and i just want to reiterate you can form a limited company with just one person taking up each and every one of these roles now to form the company, you will need a unique company name. So no one else can have that company name in the UK. You need permission to use a UK address as the company's registered office. So this is the official address of the company. You need not trade from that address or be based at that address, but you just need permission to use a UK address to do that. Now, fortunately, we do offer a number of packages to help you do that. And it's for the directors, you need all their personal information for the shareholders as well. And for the PSCs, you need all that basic information information such as date of birth. We're going to touch on that in a bit. And again, like Richard said, you need to look at the shares. So this is how the company is going to be owned. So are you going to have two shareholders who own one share each? So they've got a 50-50 split, or is it going to be a little bit more sophisticated than that? So we're going to touch on that in a little bit as well. Now, first off, I, I do need to mention that we do, when forming a limited company, all company formation agents must collect proof of ID and proof of address documentation for the account holder. That's the person who actually makes the transaction on our site. 
Um, and if you're using a registered office service, which you probably will need to do or use a registered office service, you will probably you will need to provide proof of ID and proof of address for your directors and PSEs. Now, now this is just to ensure we comply with AML and KYC requirements. Um, again, in the formation process, I'll be able to show you how to quickly do that. OK, so let's actually go through the process. Okay, so now you should be seeing my our homepage now. This is Companies Made Simple. Is that correct? Can you confirm if you can see that, Andres? That... Yes, yes, that's all good. Thank you. Fantastic. Right, now this is where, this is the key place. This is where you get started on the company formation process. Now here we're going to type in the name of the company that we want to form today. So we're going to go for International Example. Okay, and we're going to... It search just to check if that company name is available. Good news, that company name is available. And as you'll see, we've got various different packages. They start from 1399 and they go up to 9999. Um, if you do want to use a registered office service, which again, you will need if you're based in Peru, there's the privacy package, the comprehensive package, and the ultimate package. Um, I won't go through all the different features. We'll be here for a while. We also offer a non-residence package. Now, this, again, is tailor-made for people who live outside of the UK. Um, and that is the package that we're going to move ahead with today. So select by now. And then you just work your way through the payment process. So after this, it's just it's just your regular checkout. I won't go through the whole payment process. So you, it's just entering your um, address information, your card information, and then you you the company will be then added to your online dashboard, which you'll see here. So this is the next step once you've actually bought the company. So as you'll see here, International Example Limited, Company Incorporation incomplete. Now we just need to actually go ahead and form the company. Now, the very first step of forming the company in our process is to put in the registered office. As I mentioned, this is the official address for the company and it must be based in the UK. Our system won't let you put in an address that's not based in the UK. Now, because the international package that we added to the basket included our registered office service, it's already pre-populated our address in here. So that's 20, 22 Wenlock Road. If you went for, if you had an accountant who offered you, they, to use their address, which is possible, um, we untick that and then you pop in another address there. So as you'll see here, it has to be based in the United Kingdom. With the package we bought, we, we did have the registered office service, so we don't need to do that. We're just going to check how we're going to receive the certificate of incorporation. So that is essentially the birth certificate of the company. So it's um, to prove that the company was incorporated at company's house. It's a legitimate company, it's got the company's number, and that's just a physical document that outlines that. Okay, so we've done that. The next step in the process is the SIC code. That's Standard Industrial Classification Code. Now, this is the code that outlines the industry that your company is going to be operating in. You can have anywhere between one and four codes. Now, you don't need to worry too much. Um, you're not tied into this industry. It's very much indicative. Don't worry too much if you, know, if you don't know what you're going to be doing with your com limited company, although it sounds like you are going to know what you're going to be doing. So we're, we're just going to stop typing in a keyword. See what that brings up. And there you go. Retail sale by mail order houses or the internet. That, that, that sounds close enough. So we're going to select that code. There we go. And we're only going to go for one code for speed's sake. So one code, and then we'll work our way through the process. Now, the next step is to appoint the directors. And as we mentioned, this is the person who's actually going to be running the company. So this is my company. So I'm going to put in my own details. And as you see, you'll find Peruvian there as a nationality. Um, occupation, I'm going to say I'm a consultant. And country of residence, Peru. As you'll see, that's absolutely fine on our system. And here is the proof of ID box that I mentioned. 
Um, we do need to collect this information. Now you can either do it now during the company formation process, or you can wait a little bit and form your company and do it a bit later. Uh, we're going to skip it for now. Just again, we have, we've only got a limited amount of time. So no, I want to validate later. So all we do there is we pop in an email address. And that sends the validation information to that email address. Now we need to enter in the residential address for the director. Now this has to be your actual residential address where you live. It doesn't matter, it can be in Peru, that's absolutely fine. Okay, Peru, tick this box here. Okay, missed it. Okay. Next up, the shareholders. Now, these are the people who actually run the company. So we're going to move across the screen. We don't want to add another director. It's just me. I'm running this company by myself. Time to put in the shareholders. Now, it will pre-populate my name here because I've already entered my information. Now, when it comes to allocating shares, this is extremely important. Now, our advice is always to keep it simple. It's so much easier to add new shares in your company than it is to remove them. So our default setting here is you have one share worth one pound, and we're going to set the currency as uh, pounds. You can also do uh, euros or US dollars. So we're going to leave it as one share worth one pound, and this is the number of shares I'm going to allocate to myself. Again, if you do have any questions, feel free to send me an email and I'll, I will get, get back to you because I, I understand that it, it, this is, it, it does get quite technical at this stage. Okay, so I've, had a, I've put myself down as a shareholder. Here's the statement of capital. So that's the breakdown of the share. So I've got one share worth one pound and that one share worth one pound comes to one pound. Um, I'm doing this alone. I don't want to add another shareholder. I could add another shareholder if I want to do. I'm not going to. I'm going to proceed by myself. Okay, PSCs. Now, this is the people with significant control. Now, our system knows, that, again, the majority of cases, the PSC is going to be the director. So it's pre-filled me in here. Um, I'll be very surprised if you come across a company where it, if your company doesn't have you as the PSC. But if you do have any questions, there is a guide down here on the right hand side to help you out, break down the nature of control, who else could be a PSC in your company. But in this instance, I am the PSC as well. So we just move forward to the next step. Now, here is the memorandum and articles of association. These are the documents that outline how your company is going to be run. Now, that sounds quite um, sophisticated and like, oh, I don't know what to add there, but there is a default set of memos that suit the overwhelming majority of companies, um, which we use, which if you were forming directly with Companies House, they would use as well. So these, these memorandum articles will get your company's company formed. If you did want to um, upload your own memorandum articles, you're more than welcome to, but we strongly advise you get the advice of an accountant before doing that. So talk to someone such as Richard, who'll be able to prepare your own memorandum articles. If you did want to upload your own, upload custom articles, choose the file there. But like I said, the default will say, suit most companies. So we're just going to tick that box there and then proceed to the next step of the process. Now you hit the banking partners now. Adelaide will be pleased to see this is where we offer our partnership with Tide. Um, for speed's sake, if you, did, if you wanted to opt into Tide here, we'll, we'll send you an email, we'll send you the Tide link, hit select. Once your company's formed, you'll get that. But just for speed's sake, I'm gonna work all across this process. So we're gonna say, actually at the moment, I don't want a bank account for my company. And then you hit another page. Again, there's just a few more banking options that you can use. Again, we're going to skip through that. So just we have various partnerships in place. And if you do wish to opt into any of these partners, you're more than welcome to. There's no obligation. You can just work your way through the process. There's no extra cost involved in those partnerships. And now we're at the final page of the, um, the, the formation process is the incorporation summary. So all you'd need to do is check over everything you've written, make sure there's no typos, um, maybe you forgot to add a shareholder. If there is an update you want to make, just click change, click change, go in, make the update, go back, change it, come back here, hit form the company. 
So we're just going to check through here. I'm happy with everything, so I'd, I'd hit submit the incorporation, and then the company will be formed in approximately three working hours. Um, we'll send you an email as soon as the company's been formed and with your digital documentation. Okay, so I'll just get back to the end of the presentation. So it really is, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. So like I said, free working hours, um, we do offer a number of packages that can help you regardless of where you live. But if you're forming in Peru, um, you need to probably start from the, um, the privacy package upwards. So the privacy package is 19.99, and that will give you permission to use our address as your company's registered office for a year. That is a renewable on a yearly basis. But um, for more information, I do recommend taking a look at companiesmadesimple.com or send me an email uh, via Matthew A at madesimplegroup.com. Thank you, Matthew. Um, now we're going to go into a bit more specific, getting your company to sell through Amazon UK. And for that, we have here Kevin Dixie uh, is going to help us through that process. Thanks, Andres. Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time out today to watch these wonderful presentations. Um, I'm going to briefly take you through Amazon now. Back in February, we did a longer presentation about the ins and outs of Amazon. This time is more about how to set up the actual account with a few examples of how you can effectively build a great Amazon presentation. So we're going to cover basically why you should be looking at Amazon, the steps to set the account up and how to add products on Amazon. And at the end, what we find at the moment is selling best in the UK. So firstly, a bit about us. We've been around for quite some time. We specialize in setting up uh, companies on Amazon. Um, primarily, it's UK startups, mid-sized companies, companies from all categories we've worked with. Um, we have a partnership with GS1, who we'll go into more detail shortly. Um, and in the UK, since COVID and the lockdown, we've been busier than ever. So the, the demand is really, really growing right now in the UK for online services. So a bit about Amazon in the UK. Um, there are 14 and a half billion pounds of sales through the marketplace, there were, sorry, in 2018. You know, this is three years ago. That's gonna be hu hugely higher now. Um, most, so it says here 52%. So that's over half of all products sold on Amazon are by sellers selling directly to the consumer. So this means a third party seller means you guys effectively. Um, there's 15 million people pay per month for Prime. So Amazon Prime gives you access to films, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But more importantly, free shipping on Amazon. So Amazon's growing super, super quick. And as, as I'm saying, I'm, I'm trying to sort of I'm speeding this process up a bit here. But since lockdown, there was a huge change where people Prior to that, would go to grocery stores to buy their food. And with lockdown, they changed their mindset and started to buy more online. So Amazon is a sales engine. So most people that we start work with basically say that Amazon is effectively, you know, it's not going to be good for us. This is a company that came to us having had no sales, said it didn't work. And you can see here that in three months, they turned over 140,000, I think, 150,000 with our help. So it does work. On Amazon, there are three ways of selling. The first way is you sell directly to Amazon, just the same way as you would with any major retailer, and that's called Vendor. Now, Vendor is invite only, so Amazon will actually contact you, you can't contact them. Um, and then the second idea, the second way of selling on Amazon is through something called Seller Central. So in essence, you're selling to the same people, um, but, the, but you have control over everything. You're not selling to Amazon, so they're not paying you for the product, you're selling directly to the consumer, and it's the consumer that's buying from you, so you've got to make more margin, you will make more margin. And as you can see on the presentation here, FBA means it's fulfilled by Amazon, so you ship your stock into Amazon's warehouses, and when a consumer buys the product, Amazon will ship it to them directly. So as Richard was saying on his presentation, you know, th this would seem to be a good way for you guys, given that Amazon actually look after the VAT side of things. FBM is fulfilled by merchant. So fulfilled by merchant is where you are selling on Amazon, but you've got a warehouse stocking your product in the UK who ship directly to the customer. 
that's generally better if you've got huge products like big heavy weighted products because Amazon will charge you quite a lot for that. The smaller products, Amazon are the cheapest by miles. We've got clients that are selling, for example, packets of bars of chocolate, for example, and they're charging just the customer, they're charging the seller just 60 pence to ship it. Whereas through our general post office here, that would cost nearly two pounds. And the third option you've got on Amazon <clears throat> is to a reseller. So that's someone who's already selling on Amazon. Um, and if you're interested in that, we've got partnerships in place both Andres and I with a company in the UK that can help you ship it, sell your products to Amazon. Oops. So as per the speakers, you know, to sell in the UK, you need to have quite a lot of things set up. You need a company set up and you need bank accounts, etc. With Amazon, it's slightly more complicated. As a, as a Peruvian company, you can't actually sell on Amazon directly. If you've got a company set up in any of these countries on this screen here, you can, if you don't, you'll need to put into place everything that Matthew and Richard and Adelaide have explained. Everything needs to be set up. And the one thing I've noticed that we all, we all keep talking about is the proof of ID. It's really important in the EU. You need to have always, so anything, any marketplace, so anywhere you're selling uh, in the EU, you need to have proof that you are who you are. So passport, driving license, etc. cetera. Um, going back to Amazon, so you've got, two types of account, you've got a professional or an individual. So an individual account is free to start with. However, it doesn't give you much control. You can't run um, campaigns, you can't run advertising. It's very difficult to um, upload products in bulk. We always recommend everyone starts with a professional feature, which costs 25 pounds per month, and that's paying Amazon directly that. So here's the sign up process. I'll go through this quite quickly, I'm aware we've kind of taking too much time. So this, by the way, the presentation will be available afterwards so you can take it at your own pace. Go to Seller Central, sign up. They need to, again, they'll need your full valid passport or ID card and a proof of address. Then they need to be about your company. So we've already gone through the company, so you will have this information if you've set it up at this point. Um, and again, bank details, we've gone through the bank details. So the Amazon, Amazon really want as much proof that you are who you are and your bank is who it is, et cetera, et cetera. So just bear that in mind if you're looking to sell up on Amazon. Um, now, once, you're, once, you're, once you've been verified, now this process can take 10 days, sometimes two weeks within Amazon. It's very, very strict at the moment, given the amount of fraud that's happened in the past. Where we, so be very aware that if you're looking to sell on Amazon, it's, it's, a, it's not a quick process, but it is worthwhile. Um, so some categories require approval. So if we focus on grocery, to sell a grocery, a food product on Amazon, you need to take an image of it, just showing that it is what it is. It's got a barcode on it. The ingredients are correct. They, they need to manually check that. Um, applying for a category, once you're in Amazon, you literally click on add a product. And if, as you can see here, a gin-based product, so it's an alcohol product, you click on apply to sell and then you'd need to submit information. Assuming the product is already on Amazon, you literally, you'll, you'll search for the product. If your product, if that's your product or a product that you're selling, you can literally just click sell the product and it's done in two minutes. If the product's not on Amazon, the best thing to do is click on, I'm not selling a product on Amazon and upload the information. Most importantly here, you must have GS1 registered barcodes. Now GS1, I've got a partnership with GS1. They have a presence in Peru. That's the Peruvian address to their website. It's quite inexpensive, but Amazon do require you have GS1 barcodes. And these other parts here are just important elements. So SKU is a part number for your product. If you don't have that, you can make it up, but everything on Amazon needs a barcode and a SKU, otherwise it just won't work. And the rest is, is more information about the products. And the more information, the more you sell. Um, now I'm going to rush through the next part because the time is ticking. So if you're selling on Amazon, it's, it's more important to go really heavy on the information. You have to have belief. This is a client of ours that we started to work with who had zero sales selling coffee. We started working with them. You can see the difference is better imagery, better text, better, better information. So these guys, have sold thousands upon thousands of products now on Amazon since we worked with them. Um, 
Next stage is if you can get a trademark on the UK if, or in Europe, if you've got a trademark registered, so that could be your brand name, it could be your logo. This gives you so much more access to, to better tools on Amazon, such as um, you can build uh, better, better description. So for example, here, if you had no trademark, this is all you could show on Amazon, which is just a brief description of your product. Now with the trademark, this is sort of the thing we built recently. So we've got better images, better visualization, more information and just making your brand stand out, making it kind of stick, making people get excited about what you've got. And you can also cross reference other products you're selling, which makes all the difference. Um, and of course, by having your brand, by having the product built properly, you become number one. So on Amazon in the UK, typically a number one product can be selling thousands of units per day. It doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen. Um, also, when you've got a brand, you can build a store. So if you've got a great video, you can build a storefront and show your video off. Everything matters on Amazon. And it's, again, the biggest shop, certainly in the UK. Things we're finding that work really right now, certainly food and snacks and ambient products have gone crazy in the last year. So we've seen companies that, that have gone from nothing to selling tens of thousands, tens of thousands of, of units per month. And bearing in mind they're selling directly to the consumer so these guys are, are making like 85 percent margin and on the rest of that list so things like beverages homeware home gym etc home gym was a big thing i think that's slowed down now now the gyms are starting to open again so anyway my brief present presentation for you if you want any information i've got all of this information on email links to seller central links to register your brand links to register trademark and if you wanted to have a call with me feel free to click on that Calendly link within the presentation sorry copy the presentation link down and I will be able to help you thank you very much thank you Kevin um, thank you everyone all the panelists for joining us this afternoon morning in Peru um, the information has been quite useful. Um, we thank you for giving us an idea of what the process is to um, not only establish a company in the United Kingdom, but also um, the ability to do sell their products through Amazon UK platform. That's something that I would like to highlight um, regarding the uh, comments uh, made by Adelaide Carlton from Thai is that um, Thai at the end of the day is it's, a, it's a one option you may have uh, you know in terms of banking in the United Kingdom. What I like to say about that is that um, sometimes it's kind of difficult um, to open a bank account in other banks. We we've looked around. We asked. Uh, several banks, uh, we did not get uh, many positive responses. And Thai was one of those banks that uh, provided us, you know, more flexibility in terms of um, having the ability to open a bank account. Because if you don't have a bank account, you can't do business in the United Kingdom. It's just impossible. So um, just, just that as a, as a side comment. Um, once again, thank you, everyone. And we have some questions, and I'm just going to help us with some of the questions we received uh, online. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for your your questions. We have a few questions here. Um, let's let's start with a question for Richard. Um, are you there, Richard? Yep. There yes, is. I am. <laughs> um, it's a question from Emmanuel. Yeah, just give me one second. I'll read, I'll read the question. Sure. So the first question is, when you apply for VAT registration, there are two alternatives. Um, one using your national insurance number. The second one being using your tax ID, uh, the one you use in Peru. So what are the contingencies to look out for when not having a UK national insurance number? Um, and then they say, if I get a national insurance number in the future, can this be updated in the VAT? Mm. Well, um, when, when you're an overseas director, um, obviously you won't have a UK national insurance number. 
Uh, the number is used in the application merely as a reference point to identify the individual. So if you use the local Peruvian uh, tax number, uh, that will suffice as evidence. Uh, there's a layer that accountants can also do by being a representative uh, when registering for VAT, and that can help speed up the process as well. In the future, when you do get a national insurance number, you don't have to update the VAT record because by the time VAT is uh, granted, you're already in the system, so they know who you are. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and there's another question for Adelaide. Um, the question goes, uh, looking at options to open a UK bank account, uh, there seems to be two, gr two group of banks, of course, the traditional banks like Lloyds, Barclays, HSBC, and then the modern banks like Tide, Revolut, Monzo. Um, traditional banks take almost like one to two months to open a, a bank account, uh, while the modern banks can be instantaneously, basically. Uh, the question is, are there any services that traditional banks offer that modern banks do not? The short answer is yes. <laughs> um, there, are, there are big differences between the two. Um, Tide was founded by a former business banker from High Street Banks. And the reason that essentially the company was founded was that exact problem. He found that it was taking too long for businesses to essentially onboard and, and everything was being very underserved in the, in the SME space. So the advantages to the challenger banks or the challenger banking platforms as well is exactly what you've pointed out, the speed and the ease, um, the flexibility as well and the more modern style of managing your accounts. The advantage, I guess, to any high street option, and I do have to point out that we do have a lot of businesses with us who hold both a tight account and another account, perhaps with another banking platform. Um, and that's because their particular business requirements may mean that they use one for their expense management or you know, using the card um, for foreign payments because for us, we don't charge anything for that. Uh, and the other account, perhaps they use for cash flow or another purpose. So I think the, the larger style high street banks will offer things like mortgages, for example, which Tide are not doing. Um, and perhaps may suit a much larger enterprise business. I mean, we're talking large scale here. Uh, whereas, to be honest, the differences in the small to medium business space is becoming less and less as the challenger banks begin to provide more product features and, you know, develop further in the space. So hopefully that answers your question. Perfect. Thank you. Um, there's a there's another question that has two sides. I think probably the first one will be more directed towards Richard and then uh, I think Matthew can complement. Um, so the question goes, if you can explain a little bit further about taxes in the UK, uh, how, how do we um, do your taxes and can you do it through a virtual platform? And to complement that, if companies made simple platform can uh, help you with that, uh, paying your taxes? That's a good question. The uh, tax system in the UK, yes, it is online. Uh, they're very much gearing to electronic submissions of things. Uh, you can do it by software or actually on their website. So it's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the short answer. As for companies made simple, I'll uh, let Matthew comment on, on that side. Thanks, Richard. Um, not directly through our platform, no, we don't um, get involve ourselves in anything to do with tax, but we do have partnerships in place during the process. For example, Anna, um, free agent, and other accountants as well, who, can, who we, we give you the opportunity to opt in during the process, and they can then help you with tax issues such as that. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> then there's a, another question. This one goes for uh, Kevin about Amazon, selling an Amazon. Um, the question goes, can, can the Amazon UK account be used to sell in the rest of the European countries? Yeah, when you sign up for Amazon Seller Central in the UK, it also effectively opens up the whole of Europe. And as, as it currently stands, Amazon EU, that opens instantly, Spain, Italy, France, Germany, Netherlands, 
Sweden and Poland, and they're adding new countries every five minutes to that. The, the issue at the moment with the UK is more because of Brexit getting the products to Europe, but it does. But if you've got the ability to send product into European warehouses, that's not a problem. For twenty-five pounds per month, by the way, <laughs> for all of those. Thank you. There's another question for you as well. Um, in your experience, are the sale volumes obtained from apps like Jungle Scout accurate? Yeah, there. So Jungle Scout, for anyone wanted to doesn't understand, so Jungle Scout is a is an app that you can download for a small amount of money that goes on to Google, for example. And Jungle Scout generally is within five, ten sales units per month, correct? Um, it, can, it depends on volumes, but yeah, definitely use that as an example. But Jungle, Jungle Scout is showing the sales figures. So it shows you live sales figures for the previous month. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, well, I think um, we ran out of time. Uh, thank you everyone for, um, again, for joining us this afternoon. I think the information we've received um, has been quite helpful. Uh, hopefully we help to clear up a little bit uh, uh, the information in terms of how to do business in electronic platforms in the United Kingdom, specifically in Amazon. Um, for everyone else, para el resto, el, el grupo, eh, estamos acá, la oficina comercial en Londres. Eh, este es nuestro sexto taller eh, de lo que va en los últimos meses. Eh, debo decir que han sido bastante exitosos. El último que tuvimos fue para participaron 300 personas desde el Perú. Um, queremos agradecerles el apoyo. Obviamente nosotros estamos acá para ayudarlos en lo que necesiten. Eh, si tuviesen alguna eh, pregunta posterior, alguna consulta, encantados de apoyarlos. El día de mañana subiremos esta presentación a nuestra página web. Ahí va, verán no solamente esta presentación, sino otras que hemos hecho, eh, que se, seguro serán de gran utilidad. También tenemos en nuestra página web guías de cómo hacer negocios que hemos elaborado en los últimos meses también. Eh, y nada, muchas gracias a todos. Espero que hayan disfrutado de esta presentación y nos despedimos hasta una próxima oportunidad. Thank you so much, everyone. Muchas gracias. Thank you, guys. Thanks.